Avi Myers here, segment two. And this is the best segment two you may ever see. My favorite politician, your favorite politician, the president of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, the person who's taken us down to the deep tunnel, the person who's taken Sonny, not me, thank God, 150 feet over the air in a crane to get, to get some outside shots, the person who took us on an amazing tour, didn't, the river froze, of uh, the Sanitary Canal, North Shore Channel, uh, that you'll be seeing coming up in the next month or two. Uh, we're talking about President Terry O'Brien. Terry, how are you doing? Good, and yourself? First of all, really good. Thank you so much for being here. And I meant to wear my uh, Terry Brewer button, which is somewhere, but that's okay. <laughs> You're not Terry Brewer's enough. another guy. Oh, Terry Brewer. <laughs> Terry, Terry O'Brien. O'Brien. <laughs> you got Brewer on your mind. <laughs> no, actually, I do have Brewer on my mind in part. But also, the fact is, we also have the green sleeves that we, we don't have on the air. I'm drinking water right now, people. There you go. But we have those green sleeves that have your birthday on it, as a matter of fact, March 21st, that primary day. Uh, that we put our beer in. That's right, but more importantly, so you're drinking water. So that's, um, unfortunately, that's more uh, guys, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> well, you know, I figure I got a few more interviews today, so not to the last one am I going to have any beer. That's right. Um, in any event, you know what? You you certainly made the headlines in a very unusual way. You gave people back money. <laughs> uh, I gave people back money a couple ways. Uh, mm. uh, last board meeting, we gave uh, seven million dollars back to the taxpayers of Cook County. Wow. We abated uh, seven million dollars. I know it doesn't sound like a lot when uh, our budget's about one point two billion dollars, but uh, but when compared you, when to stuffing you, it down your pocket. Well, exactly. <laughs> and when you look at a lot of the other. Uh, Governmental agents, uh, agencies in the region, whether it's the county, the city, the state, you know, everybody's scrapping for every penny that they can find. Uh, we were able to come up with $7 million to, to give back to the homeowners of this uh, great county. So uh, we're very proud of that. And, and that's because you guys actually generate quite a bit of income. Well, we do, but the fact is, is I mean, we're, we're fiscally responsible in what we do and and, and, oh, you mean you didn't spend what you promised you were going to spend? Exactly, exactly. Just because it's there doesn't mean you have to spend it all. So uh, What's the matter? All uh, government does cost overrun. Well, <laughs> not this one, not this one. So well, That's uh, good. That's why I voted for you. Yeah, well, I appreciate that, Avi. You so. know, I voted for you last election even though you weren't on the ballot. 2012, <laughs> we can do it again. Well, I got to vote for three. So there was uh, Kathleen Therese Meany and there was Cynthia Santos, Santos and, and then there was you. Whoever your third one was. Well, actually, I voted for Dean Maragos, okay? So... <laughs> But uh, but I also gave money back in another way, um, which I think you mentioned that you read in the newspaper, and that was uh, from my campaign. Um, uh, it's always been uh, my practice uh, and the campaign committee's practice was never to solicit any contributions from employees. Um, not only statutorily can you not do that, but uh, what happened here was that there was an obscure piece of uh, legislation in our statutes that really uh, it prohibits myself, my colleagues on the board, uh, any employee that works for the district to one, contribute to a commissioner, two, to contribute to an alderman, a state rep, wow, a state senator, uh, and numerous other uh, trustees, commissioners, and things of that nature. As a matter of fact, our employees aren't allowed to even participate in the political process, whether it's directly or indirectly. So that means they can't go out and help a candidate get reelected. And basically, what it is, it's I personally think it's an infringement on their first rights, first right amendment amendments, rights. you know, amendment rights. Yeah, they can't exercise their own prerogatives for who they'd like to support. No, the only thing they can do is actually go in and vote for a particular candidate. And that's a pretty far-reaching re uh, list. Yeah. So. You know, as you're well aware of, I worked for the district uh, out of school for three years, and I, over the years I've developed many friends and relationships uh, at the agency. And, um, you know, we had people, even though we never solicited them for contributions, you know, we would have people that would call the campaign and say, you know, I want to attend you know, Terry O'Brien's fundraiser. And uh, what we would do is we would send them a complimentary ticket. Okay. Uh, we didn't even solicit them when they'd call and ask for um, to be uh, be able to be invited to the party. So, what we would do is we send them a comp ticket, and then basically, you know, it was up to them on whether they were going to contribute or not. We we didn't play any hardball or do anything of that nature. So, with this piece of legislation that was found in the statute, it basically uh, was the campaign's uh, philosophy and thought that we should reimburse these people 
who contributed to our campaign who were employees or officers or whatever at the district. And since you've been in the district about 20 years now and nobody knew about this law before, if you guys had, well, you and, and your excellent lawyer, Jim Nally, yes. um, hadn't, um, hadn't brought this out, probably nobody would have found out about it for another 30 or 40 well, years. Well, exactly, and exactly. So, you know, I mean... There's still laws in the books about leaving enough room for a horse and a wagon to go between houses. Yeah. And I'm and, not kidding. <laughs> and, you know, and, you know we, we took a bang in a paper. I mean... But, you know, it wasn't only our campaign. It was the other eight commissioners on the boards, their campaigns. You know, they were asked to do the same thing. Well, I think that anybody that really looked at it, I don't, I don't know that, um, you know, it's really a bang because this is something you, you did voluntarily. Well, you know, I, some of the word and terminologies that the reporter used, such as we solicited, we never solicited. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, it, it has always been a practice of the campaign before I even ran for office. Yeah. Um, so, and, and as... My attorney, Jim Nally, said, he goes, you know, I'd like to call the reporter and tell him to, you know, make the correction as it should stand on the record. But uh, I said, leave it alone. I said, you know, it's, it's already forgotten or whatever. But uh, so we did that. We reimbursed, uh, dating back to 1999, people who had made any contributions to our campaign. Um, and they printed the top 16 people, you know, the state's attorney later on said that you go back 18 months, but we went back all the way to 1999 and jumped the gun on getting everything returned to people. So uh, the matter was resolved. Um, we got a clearance from the, the state's attorney's office saying that uh, everything is fine. So, Which is great, and you actually gave money back, and you did it. You're the one that initiated it as opposed to the other way around. Exactly. And I think that's the most so, important and thing. And it's, to, yeah. yeah. I mean, once we, the, the, the thing was brought to our attention, we, we took care of it right away and resolved the matter immediately. Yeah. So anyway, I hope I hope that settles everything for everybody. So do I. I mean, uh, you know, normally people give the money back to charity, but I felt it would the right, right way to go back to, back to the, the people right way. that they can give it to charity. Contribute it. Exactly. So yeah. that's how we did it. And charity starts right here, guys. Send me checks. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work for the water rack. <laughs> So. By the way, caps24.org for all your community policing news. Anyway, um, so let's talk about um, chemicals in the water. And we're not talking about the good kind. No, we're talking <laughs> about uh, drugs, legal drugs. Maybe un illegal too, <laughs> but, uh, but um, there's a couple stories been in the newspaper recently with regards to pharmaceuticals uh, uh, and hormonal drugs in, in, uh, in the water supply. Well... You know, one of the big issues is when a drug has expired or becomes out of date, most people take it and either flush it down their sink or, or down the toilet. Oh. We no longer want you to do that because that has an impact on uh, the effluent once it passes through our treatment facility. Now, effluent, because every time I use the word effluent around people, they go, what's effluent? Effluent is water. Yeah, it's and, like and a discharge with yucky stuff in it usually. <laughs> well, the, well, once it's discharged, it's clean from our facilities. Okay. But the, but the problem that you're running up against, too, is majority of these chemicals are excreted from the human body. So we're that's, not only... Think of effluent more like that, guys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's part, the majority of the problem, but then we have the other problem of people trying to properly dispose of these pharmaceutical waste that are either outdated or, or spent. So what we suggest you do is that um, either crunch it up uh, try to dissolve it in water and then pack it into something secure, wrap it with duct tape and put it out in your garbage and let it go to the sanitary landfills. Uh, what you also want to re remember to do is take all the information off a medicine bottle that is personal with regards to your name, oh, yeah. your address, uh, the compound that's actually in that medicine container. Um, remove all that information and pack it with kitty litter or coffee grounds, um, whatever, just to, to mask the odors and what. Yeah, know. the same thing the drug dealers do. Yeah. <laughs> well, well we, we did work with the, the sheriff's office back in 2006 and 2007 where we had a medical waste disposal day, and we worked with the sheriff's office and a lot of local community police mm -hmm. agencies, uh, Chicago Department on Aging, where we had asked people to bring them into the, those particular uh, stations because you know some of this stuff is controlled substance we want to make sure it's handled properly and that someone's not just digging through your garbage finding you know something that they shouldn't be finding and then taking it and causing some some harm to their health so um, we ask you to to be wise you can go on our website we do have instructions as far as pro 
properly packaging this material for disposal in your uh, garbage can. And that website is www.mwrd.org. So www.mwrd.org. Yeah. MWRD stands for Metropolitan right. Water Reclamation District. And very important, I, f I forgot, and I'm sorry, I apologize. I want to say hi to Kathleen. And um, let's, just, just for the record, okay, we're talking about Kathleen Kratzmeyer. Hi, how you doing? Okay, because apparently there's more than one Kathleen, and somebody thought I was saying hi to a different Kathleen. So, okay, I'm Kathleen sorry. Kathleen Tresemini. Uh, who's really terrific, but I've actually never met her. I just talked to her on the phone once. Oh, well, we got to get her on. I voted uh, for her. Well, that's up to her. She, I know. She's I been know. invited. I know she has. We I still have an has. election in November. I know she <laughs> has. So, And uh, as you had mentioned in one of your other shows, uh, there are three uh, incumbents. We're all renominated in this last primary mm -hmm. election on February 5th. So uh, there shouldn't be any uh, changeovers uh, after the November election, but we don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it's be very unusual. For, I mean, this is not what you'd call a Republican year, and this is well, not a Republican. They're still trying to find the Republican in Cook County. Well, I th <laughs> still think they're trying to find Republican candidates for this particular position. Oh, nobody's run? Oh. Nobody's filed as of yet. I know they okay. have three people from the Green Party that will be running, um, but as far as I know right now, nothing. nobody on the Republican Party has filed. Wow. Okay. Well, that sounds like a happy situation. <laughs> well, we, we had it uh, the last time around where we were ran on a post in 2006. So. Well, I like that. Oh. When it comes to you, I'm fine with that. Certain commissioners, <laughs> maybe not, but most of them are just fine. Uh, you get one more topic. <laughs> well, one more topic. Uh, we're moving along on our stormwater management program. Uh, we're working with uh, the six different watersheds throughout the county and developing a, a water management or watershed management ordinance. Uh, that could, that uh, these communities can work with with regards to alleviating flooding mm -hmm. in uh, in the Chicago area. Um, we're in a president's budget again for uh, another thirty three point five million dollars for two thousand and nine for the continued construction Excellent. of the reservoir. So we're very happy about that. We were in Washington a couple weeks ago, meeting with our congressional delegation here in Illinois, as well as our uh, well one U.S. senator. The other one's on a campaign trail, but we met with his staff and. Uh, his office and and he has uh, hopefully the next president of the United States. Um, okay. uh, they're very supportive of the project so um, we've been working hard with them as well as the Army Corps of Engineers personnel out of Washington to make sure that 33.5 stays in the budget for 2009. It would it is, be really really nice. Yeah, It's one of the highest funded projects in the United States and with what's going on with the infrastructure everybody's trying to get uh, some money to help themselves with regards to improving the infrastructures in their communities. And is this, uh, well actually I don't have time to ask you for something specific, um, but go, real quick answer on that one. But well, that, it's no. going to go to actually the reservoirs which are part of the tunnel and reservoir plant, so, cool. or deep tunnel. So definitely going to help that project move along at this point. I want to thank very much my guest, he hasn't, who hasn't graced us for way too long, but we got to finish up the show we did on, on the sanitary canal on Pollution Control One, President Terry O'Brien of the Water Reclamation District. Uh, I want to thank my entire technical group, Sonny Hirsch. want to urge you all to join us. Website, ntnm.org. If people want to contact you, Terry, they call... 312-751-5700. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Terry O'Brien. See you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.